evening, everyone, and we welcome you to this call, uh, Karen Rice's free class. And um, just to give you a little bit of a background about Karen and where we met, we met like a couple months ago, right, Karen? Or maybe it's been more than two months ago. Uh, at, at Women's Chamber, um, I was there assisting the membership, and um, she was uh, she presented to me her book and her work. And as soon as I saw uh, just a quick glance of her book, I thought to myself, she needs to spread this work and her message to the world. And so I'm here tonight um, supporting her and helping her out spread her work uh, to everyone. And so um, now if you're wondering what is the purpose of this uh, call, well, number one, um, she wants to introduce her work to you. And number two, she also wants to introduce her certification program, which she would be mentioning uh, later on towards the end of her call. Uh, in case you know anyone, a parent or a teacher, or anyone who works pretty much with kids um, can, you know, uh, take advantage of this uh, program. So, um, also, I just want to mention something about Karen. Let me edify her here. Karen Rice was named the Miracle Worker of Education and Parenting. Uh, this name was given to her several years, of, several years ago because she has mastered the power of respect. Now, Karen is also the author of Parenting for the Millennium. And to learn more about Karen and her work, you can uh, just visit her website at happykidsco.com. And so with no further ado, um, <laughs> further delay, um, please help me welcome uh, Karen Rice. Hi, Karen. Hi, Cherry. Thank you. That's a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to give a quick little background of how this all came about because it certainly was not something I ever intended or um, planned on or anything. It just kind of happened. Uh, it actually started when I was quite young. Um, I remember when I was 13 years old, I knew that I was here to do something big, and I remember sitting on my the bottom bunk bed, which was mine, and I remember thinking, I knew it wasn't to cure cancer, because I knew I did not want to spend all the time you'd have to spend in medical school and all of that. So I knew it wasn't that, but I had no idea, and I couldn't figure it out. And then my life went on, and I didn't really think about that again. Then uh, <clears throat> after I received Montessori uh, certification in India, um, came back, started a Montessori school in Northern California. It's still going. And at that time, I was very disturbed by the way uh, parents were treating their kids, the, the children that came to our children's house. And, um, and I couldn't really figure out what was going on because they didn't treat them differently than I was raised. But they did treat them differently than I learned in Montessori. And so that went on for a while. And I kind of pulled back and tried to avoid being around those kind of situations. <clears throat> then one day I was um, in a church rummage sale. And I picked up a little blouse uh, for my daughter who was a baby then. And on the back of the price tag, it, they had torn up the um, the Emancipation Proclamation. That's what it was. And there was just a little scrap of it. And the words on that little scrap of paper, all of a sudden, I had a name 
for what was bothering me. And it came in my book under the title Silent Slavery. Um, and that was what was bothering me, that, that uh, children were treated that way. Then um, I spent a long time figuring out how, what I could do about it and how I could share this knowledge and, this, and some way to help heal this situation. And um, so that's what this is all about. Um, when, when I received a um, spontaneous standing ovation from a group of elementary school children in their classroom, um, I knew I was on to something because the teacher was really surprised. I mean, they knew how to clap. Uh, when somebody was giving a talk, and and I'd been giving a talk about the 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 work that I uh, that I was it was before I wrote my book. It was as I was writing my book, and um, I was sharing this information at the request of a parent, um, and they asked me to speak at the school, and so I did. And the children, a few of them. When they were, when I was done, they uh, not only clapped but they stood up. And by shortly, every all the children were standing and clapping. So tonight, I'm going to share um, one part of that. Um, I told you that in this class, I'm going to make living or working with two-year-olds much easier by explaining why two-year-olds act as they do, what you need to do as the adult, and when you need to do it, which is important too. Okay, it's important to understand that human beings of this age, two-year-olds, are developing willpower, which, if properly developed, will serve them well from then on. Willpower has many important functions. It's the power behind wanting, wishing, and desiring. It's the power of determination, of commitment. It's the power that motivates you to act. And it's the power to persevere, to carry through. You can all see how beneficial those abilities are. And two-year-olds are constantly practicing. They're doing their best to create well-developed willpower, which they then put at the service of their intelligence. Unless adults oppose them, their intelligence is at the service of their developmental blueprint. It's built into us. Remember, this blueprint helped them achieve everything that they have so far. Going from the abilities of a newborn, you can think about that, to the abilities of a two-year-old. They can walk, talk. They know so much of how things go in our world, in the world that they grow up in. In fact, if there are people in their, in their home or that they're connected with that speak different languages, they can speak those languages too. So now their willpower is added to the mix. Their will is used to want what best serves their human development, to commit to it, to act on it, to persevere to success. A two-year-old can be easy to live with when treated with respect. To respect them, we respect what they are developmentally motivated to do. They need to make as many of their own decisions as they can. Whenever possible, we follow their lead. Remember, developmentally, they must want and wish, be determined, committed, act, and persevere. 
remember, just as you want to be happy, you want your two-year-old to be happy also. When you want them to make a different choice, encourage them by pointing out what they might find interesting and challenging about your choice. Be sure to offer the alternative before they have become determined to pursue their choice. If a two-year-old is very insistent that they must do something, that means that they are practicing being determined, committed, and persevering. Then it's good, if at all possible, that they complete what they have begun. So what are the noble qualities of two-year-olds? They are eager for life or experiences. They forgive easily. They love easily. They are honest. They are determined to follow their developmental blueprint. They can experience joy. They can experience wonder. By their actions, they can help guide you on the path of the heart. Here are some tips for respectfully, happily living with a two-year-old. Interest is the key. Encourage your child to do the tasks that attract them as soon as they show interest. Their work may not be up to your expectations of perfection, but they can improve with practice. You can offer them jobs that are simple and specific with clear physical evidence of proper completion. For example, all their clean clothes put in their drawer, all their toys picked up off the floor and put on their places on the shelf. The hammer put back in the toolbox. A small bag of groceries carried from the car to the kitchen. This enables them to judge for themselves whether they have completed the task satisfactorily. It can help them if you provide small versions of what they see you use broom, dustpan, brush, watering can, window squeegee, bucket, tools, whatever they are interested in doing. Sometimes they may want to use the larger versions for their own purposes, perhaps developing strength and coordination. Although an adult does activities for an outer purpose, the two-year-old child does them for an inner purpose. The adult wipes the table because the adult decides the table needs wiping. The child wipes the table because they need to wipe the table. They are coordinating their intelligence, their will, and their movements in accordance with their developmental blueprint which integrates them as human beings. They may wipe it for half an hour until they are inwardly satisfied and they no longer need to wipe it, at least for now. Notice what interests them, what they are eager to do. Provide opportunities for them to have as many of the desired experiences as possible. These may indicate talents to be developed or skills to be acquired for the optimum development of their potential. Do your best not to interrupt your child's activity cycles. If you must, prepare them by telling them your needs and, if possible, giving them enough time to complete their cycle of activity. Do your best not to interfere when your child is doing a loved activity or any activity that seems to involve them in deep concentration. That means when they are so intent on what they're doing that they are not really aware of what else is going on. These times of concentration, times of focus, are essential in the development of an integrated personality. 
Do not do for your child what they wish to do for themselves, however difficult or beyond their abilities the task seems to be. It's these challenges that bring about concentration and help your child integrate their personality. Helping them become a person who knows what they want, how to manifest it, and has the perseverance to carry through. When you notice that your child is making a mistake that is not a harmful one, don't correct them right then. Wait until they're finished doing that activity and offer to show them how to do it in a different way. For example, I'd like to show you a way to fold those so that they all fit in the box. It's important to use this process when they pronounce a word incorrectly. Tell them the proper word later without referring to their past mistake. For example, if they ask for pipe and you know they mean pineapple, later you can say, this is a pineapple. Would you like to eat some pineapple? Often, two-year-olds use quality names incorrectly, such as colors and numbers. They're showing that they're aware of color words and number words and how to use them, not that they necessarily know the correct name. Handle these mistakes using the same procedure that I already described. If you can avoid it, do, don't talk in front of your child as if they were not there. If you must discuss something about them, include them in the discussion as you would if it were an adult friend. When a two-year-old gets hurt, it helps them when you acknowledge that they are hurt. For example, oh, you hurt your finger. I'm very sorry you got hurt. They just need to know that you understand what they are feeling. They don't necessarily need you to make a big deal over it, but they can't relate when someone tells them that they are not hurt when they know that they are. That can turn a little hurt into a big one just to get the point across. If it is a minor hurt, your acknowledgement is often enough for them to let it go and carry on. This is acknowledging their view of their experience. When someone gets certified as a Happy Kids trainer, this is some of what you learn. Two-year-olds and making choices. Okay, we're going to do a little review here. Um, Two-year-olds are very busy creating the components of strong and well-functioning willpower. The ability to want, the ability to be determined, the ability to persevere. Putting all these abilities at the service of their intelligence. It is almost impossible for them to do anything that is contrary to this. Knowing this, at least, can make it easier to live with them. You can help change the direction of a two-year-old's will if you catch it early enough. Give them opportunities to cooperate with you. Tell them how much you appreciate their help. Two-year-olds like to work and to be helpful and useful and needed. Be alert. Quickly offer them an alternative on which to practice willing when what they first choose does not agree with you. Once they become fixed on something, then the other practices come into play, being determined and persevering. At this point, your suggestion has to be really attractive to them for them to change. Otherwise, it's easier and more peaceful if it's possible for you to do this, to go along with them, looking for the first opportunity to change their focus. Remember that this period of human development is very important. 
It doesn't last very long if they get to do it properly. If they don't, it can last maybe even a lifetime. Although I know it can seem eternal when you're right in the middle of it because they're always wanting and wanting and being determined and practicing all of this. But for you, it is a great opportunity to develop and practice patience. Here are some examples of how this can work. Now they want to dress themselves. Encourage and celebrate this step toward independence. Let them choose their clothes they wish. You can put out the clothes that go together if you wish. All socks of one color. Don't worry if they are not put on correctly. You can offer to help. But if they don't want it, realize that you now have time to schedule for this. Do not mention clothes put on wrong. Later, offer to show them how to put on socks or shoes or dresses. Choose one at a time, maybe one a day. This is how to, uh, you might deal with separation respectfully. When your child doesn't want you to go, but you have to. Figure out whether you really need to go. If you do, be determined to help both your, both your needs get met. Tell them in advance that you have to go later. Acknowledge that they don't want you to go, but that you have to. Ask if they want to do something with you before you go. If possible, do whatever they ask. Arrange that something interesting to them happens as soon as you leave. Hug and kiss them goodbye. Tell them that you love them. Go. When your child asks you to do something, when you, I'm sorry, when you ask your child to do something but they want to do something else, Here's how you can keep your focus. Explain why you need what you're asking for, especially if it's urgent. If it's possible, let what they want happen first. Model cooperation. That's something to do all along so that when these kind of situations come up, you they already see how cooperation works. Then ask them again and again why. Even if this goes on for a while, as long as it's not urgent, and even if it is, keep being cooperative. Practice patience. Things happen faster, more smoothly when the child cooperates. Be realistic about how much time you have to do what you need to do. If you have little to no time, guide them toward your goal. Tell them you can't wait and why. Ask them what you need to do so that you can do what you need to immediately. Offer something irresistible to cooperate with you. When you ask a two-year-old to stop doing what they are determined to do, you are asking them to go against what their stage of development is making them do. Unless you can convince them willingly to change their focus to something more interesting, that is completely in harmony with the urges and needs of their development. Some people say this is bribery and that it's wrong. Is it wrong that people get paid for working? When you are doing something for someone else, using your time and energy to do something that they want, instead of what you might want to do at that moment, is it wrong for them to do something for you in return? 
It might be good for you to want to help them know what, but is it wrong for them to offer something to you? How many people would go to work if they were not paid? So if you have enough time, just keep reminding them of your need. You may discover why your child has not yet done what you asked. Help them resolve that situation. If necessary, ask again for what you need. You both get your needs met and so much more. You both practice cooperation. You both practice helping each other. You practice patience, strengthen your foundation of respect, and you both strengthen your bond of love. If you know someone who might like to become certified as a Happy Kids trainer, um, a parent, a relative, friend, teacher, daycare provider, grandparent, have them go to www.happykidsco.com forward slash apply to. It's also um, on the wall. I don't know if you can see that. If, if you can, then you'll see down at the bottom there are three links. Uh, one of them is to the website, and that one says, Let's Raise Happy Kids. One of them is a download I prepared for anyone um, taking this class today. And the other says, want to get certified, and that is the link that, that goes to the certification. So that's it for now um, in terms of what I'm presenting and if anybody has any questions um, I'm available Karen um, if uh, you have any questions just uh, press star six while we're waiting Karen you know I wish I learned about this when my kids were little <laughs> so it seems like it's so critical the two-year-old it is. It's very it, critical. It makes a huge difference too. Also, I I feel that that it's such a big transition, the two-year-old transition from babyhood to childhood, that if if it if it goes well like this, then the transition from child to teen to you know the teen transition goes much smoother also mm -hmm. so it's important and not only that it's important in terms of um, if you if you help your child go through this you know following what they need to do then they don't get stuck in the two-year-old phase but if you don't they can and they become um, people that are against whatever for whatever reason, and it's not having any, it, it becomes unrealistic once it goes beyond, you know, it, once it goes beyond the two-year-old time. Uh, but you, I see people, I see people that to me seem stuck in that, that phase that they never got to complete it. Wow. Um, I noticed Conway uh, unmuted himself. Conway, did you have a question? I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Did you Hello? have a question, Conway? Yes, I do have a question. OK, go ahead. Uh, hi, Karen. Hi, Conway. Um, I have a 17-month-old daughter. Yes. And um, me and the mom were not, uh, we're in, I mean, we're, we're still good friends. We're in civil, but uh, we're not together. Okay. 
And so I have my daughter like at least like four or five days a week, and then she has it. You know, any any day we can we can just switch with my daughter. You know. Yeah. And so uh, I mean, in the house we call my daughter a beautiful disaster because she's beautiful, but she's just a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> She throws stuff on me. I have, I don't know, she, she throws my phone on my face. And then um, I, I can hit her, you know. I can I can slap her hand or her butt. But, but uh, uh, it, it, one time she threw me a, a phone, my phone, on my forehead. And I would just yell at her. I know I feel bad, but like, like you said, it's a good time to uh, practice my uh, meditation. Right. Uh, but the thing is, like, um, I don't have my daughter for, like, the whole week, every week, every day. So I don't know where she learned that because in, in, in my house, me and my mom, we really take care of her, you know, love her so much. But I don't know what she's doing on the other side. So what can I do to improve myself for my daughter, a good relationship with my daughter? Well, if you can resist um, uh, yelling at her and hitting her, um, because chances are, well, there could be several things going on. It could be um, that she, someone was treating her in a way that felt uh, harsh to her. And I've seen that where children kind of pass it on. And if it doesn't get, back, you know, pushed back at them, then they just let it go. Um, it could be, since I don't know the situation, it could be um, frustration. Some, some people have a difficult time when... Uh, they get frustrated. I don't know if that's true with her. Um, and th in those cases, you can, can uh, I mean, I, I would say let her know how, how you feel for sure and, um, and see if there's some way that you can help her. Um, I, I would... Uh, anyway, uh, those are the two things that come to my mind. All right. I'll do that. Thank you. Sure. I wish you good luck with it. I know. Thank you. So when you said, I do have a question, Karen. When you said okay. um, this doesn't last but a long time. Right. If, let's say the parent is cooperating and, you know, acting accordingly, um, responding very well to the two-year-old, um, how do you have, like, an estimate, like, the time frame of how long the, develop, the human development takes? Um, I would say, like, in early threes, they're through mm. it. Mm. Okay. And then if they don't, if they didn't develop well, then it could, it could carry on until they grow up. It could if they don't get help, but because it, it seems like this is a window for to do this, and if they don't, they can do it, but it takes more um, effort, especially on the people that are around them, helping them, um, for them to do it. I, I believe it's possible, though. Yeah. And the thing that comes to my mind is that um, if people knew about what I call the power of respect. Um, and if they made this their foundation, you don't need to know all the details because in that you will 
find harmony with your children. And so you'll do, you know, you'll figure it out. You know, you may not know, like, what stage they're going through and what their needs are, but if you are determined to be, have this mutual respect between you, then you work things out in a way that feels good to both of you. And really, to me, that's, that's the foundation and core of the whole thing and will carry you through. So, yeah. Even the two-year-old time. I mean, it's good to know about, but if you have this other, it can even carry you through that. Right. Um, now I'm thinking for the sake of Conway and the mom of his daughter, what can Conway give to the mom so when their daughter turns to, I'm sure she's already almost there. You know, she's probably uh -huh. practicing some of the noble qualities already. And uh -huh. it's being understood, misunderstood, you know, by, I don't know, <laughs> a typical uh -huh. parent. You know, I would probably, you know, take it the wrong way, too. If my kid threw a phone in my face, you know, it's like, how do I handle that, you know? <laughs> right. So how, I mean, for me, I believe in communication. So yeah. as long as I think Conway, if if he's able to find the best way to communicate this to the mom and work it as a team and yeah. really enforce and mention or deliver the message that this is a very critical stage of human development. Of their daughter and so they I, I think it, it there's a possibility is there like some type of a worksheet uh, Karen or a cheat sheet that you can share um, to like Conway so she can pass it on to the mom or something um, let's see I'm, I'm just wondering if the the questions because I have a lot of questions in this download if they would be helpful but um, I could I could send him this script mm. oh wow that would be awesome <laughs> okay Karen I guess uh, we'll wrap it up and thank you so much again for sharing um, your time with us and you know, your message, you know,